I'm going to try to give you guys a quick example bridge and how I made my uh, design document here. So the very first thing I want to do anytime I work on a project is I want to come under document settings and I want to make sure that I'm working in the right units. I've got mine set to default to inches. Yours might not be. So you want to go in here on this command tree on the left hand side, click the little arrow and verify that you're set to inches. You would click this little tablet with a pencil and you can change it here. Okay. Let's go ahead we can get rid of that. Now the very first thing I want to do after that is select a select sketch and come in and choose a plane. It doesn't really matter which plane you pick, um, but I find it easiest to pick the one that I did because the numbers here um, count up positive this way and then positive this way, which just makes sense to my mind. So now that I'm in sketch, I'm going to click my rectangle tool. I'm going to come to the origin. It's really important that you guys center all of your all of your designs at the origin. Um, it's a fixed spot in space that the CAD program knows how to locate, and it just means that it's one less thing you have to dimension, which will be great. So I've got, or I clicked on the origin. I'm just going to pull the rectangle out here. I don't have to try and get it anywhere near what the final dimensions of it are going to be. Um, I just need it somewhere out here so that I can pick dimensions. I can use my escape key to end the, um, the rectangle tool to get out of that. Now I can go to dimensions. I can click dimensions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use some dimensions that I, I trimmed up for a, a simple design. Um, I want to make this as simple so that you guys can follow it as possible. I'm going to choose 24. And then I'm going to choose an eighth of an inch. Uh, Fusion will let me put in either the value directly for an eighth of an inch, which is uh, 0 0.125 inches, or I can simply select 1 eighth, enter the fraction in that way, and it'll do the math for me and come up with that. It's the same either way. I tend to switch back and forth. Um, depending on how tired I am. So, um, all right. So the I have uh, what I have here. I'm going to zoom out and recenter. So now I have a very long, thin um, <coughs> truss built. So I'm going to come in now, and I am going to select my rectangle tool again. And I am going to hover it over this line until it snaps to the line. By snap, I mean it's going to jump to the thicker black line. And I'm going to have to kind of work a little bit to get it off of there. It's going to want to stick to that, which is, is perfect. I want this new rectangle to be um, placed directly on that line, so that works for me. Okay, so I've created a rectangle. Again, I'm not worrying about how big I make it. As long as it's big enough, that I can just get to it with a dimensioning tool. That's what I want. It'll be much quicker. So now I'm going to come in and I am going to make this an eighth of an inch. Um, and again, I'm just using dimensions that I picked. Your bridge will be entirely different. These are just simple dimensions that I've memorized. So um, I'm going to make this three inches. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to jump out of the dimensioning tool. I'm going to click my line and over here on my sketch palette, which it might be minimized over here like this. I can just expand it. Um, when I do that, <coughs> I'm going to select construction. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some of the tools in CAD that make it useful, um, that make it, that make it capable of making really quick replications. So I'm going to make a construction line and I just kind of hover over the center of this, this side and it will snap to it. Um, and it'll allow me to create it directly on the middle of this line, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to pull it through until it gets to the other side. And once it's done that, I'll, sl or I'll click my button and now I have a construction line. Construction line is just like um, a reference point. It doesn't extrude. It's not part of the sketch proper but it's something I can put in the sketch to measure off of or uh, mirror around, which is what I'm going to use it for. And I want it halfway through this line. And the, 
that's that's going to be important because the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into my dimensioning tool and what I want to happen here is I'm going to click this edge then I'm going to click this construction line which should be snapped to that and I'm going to make this four inches and what happens is you see that it moved this entire truss that I built all the way over to four inches and now it's four inches on center which is going to really help me when I replicate um, I, I use a, a rectangular pattern and I move this thing several times down so now that I've done that I have this truss in a position it's gone entirely black around the edges which is great hit my escape key I'm gonna go back into my lines here and I'm gonna go down to this corner the vertex of this angle or the, the point where the two lines meet I'm gonna hover over it I'm gonna click on it oh I've left it in construction I've noticed that because it's dashed instead of solid so I'll hit escape that cancels it I can turn construction off go back into line and do it for real this time now you see it's solid so I am going to zoom out and I'm going to take this all the way up to the vertex of this next line okay or this next angle I'm going to click there now you can see I have a rectangle here but that would mean that the side of my bridge is solid that is not what I want so what I can do <clears throat> is I can come in here and I can sort of eyeball it. I don't really want to be that careful. I'm going to just try and pull it all the way down to the other corner. And I want to try my best to make it parallel with the other line so that I don't have to do one more button click. But if I don't get it perfect, I can always go back and, and fix that after the fact. But now I've got this pretty close. And I'm looking for a point when it's going to snap. And I think that's done it. Okay, so I can zoom back out and I can look and see, yep, those tell me that those two lines are parallel. That's the same symbol as parallel. If I hover up here on my constraints, that tells me it's parallel. That means that checks out. Those two lines are um, equal to each other. So what I can do now, I can click line again and I can come in here and I can do this and add that in there. Okay. And I can close off this little shape, which is exactly what I want to do here. Okay. Okay. The last or the next thing I can do is I can make sure that these are the right distance apart. I want to make sure that I'm creating a an eighth of an inch uh, truss, not something random. And there we go. I have a fully defined truss. Now the neat thing that I can do here is I have this, logic tells me this should be exactly the same the other way around. So if I want, I can come in here, I can click mirror, okay, I can select the lines, they'll go blue when I've selected them, and I want to try and find all the pieces of it so it's a completely defined sketch, but I don't want the whole line, so I've got to kind of hover until I find it. So all of those are now selected, okay? Oh, my mirror minimized here. So I've got all four of those objects selected. I wanna find what to mirror it about. Well, I can come in, use the mirror line that we created earlier, and now I've mirrored that apart. I don't even have to create that, okay? <clears throat> so that's gonna be really handy for me. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I want to use my linear pattern tool or my rectangular pattern tool. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to select all the parts of this center truss that we made. And the reason I want to do that is I'm going to or I'm going to replicate this thing several times. Let's see, there we go. That same hovering trick. It can be it can be tricky, but you just kind of have to be patient, hover, and you can always zoom in and make it a little easier on yourself. Okay, so I want this. I'm gonna need, I think, five of these. I might need six. But now I'm going to do this. Let's see, is that enough? Oh, I 
forgot to add that half an inch, or not half an inch, sixteenth of an inch. Pretty good. I'm just going to double check my work, and if I've made a mistake here, then I can go back and check it. But I think it'll be fine. I check this construction line to this edge, and it should be four inches. Let's see. And it is not, it is 3.75. So I can go back here. I just controlled Z to undo that replicate or that pattern. I'll go back and create it again and I will make sure it's right this time. So let's see. I selected the direction it reversed itself but that's no big deal I just had a negative sign in front now everything should be fine there we go all right so the last bit here before I get to the big replication is I'm going to come in using my line tool again and I am going to click on the vertex of those angles and take it all the way over here And then I'm going to take it back. Again, I'm not being overly fussy. I just kind of want to make sure the little stuff I can do to save myself time, like making sure those lines are parallel. I want to make sure that relationship is created. And once I'm, I know it has been, by checking over here, and those do not actually show as parallel, so we'll fix that. Oh, not equal. Okay. Let's select them again. And I'm just selecting both using my shift key. Now I want to click parallel. Oh. So apparently that relationship already existed. It just didn't show up. No big deal. Okay, I hit escape to get out of that. Now I go back in, use my dimensioning tool. And I can select both those lines, again using my shift key, and then just do um, my spacing between to make sure that it's an eighth of an inch. It is now. Those lines are defined. I want to come back in, add the little lines on the end to make sure that those are separate pieces. Okay, that's done. All right, so now what I have is I have pretty much everything I need to start doing um, some really quick mirroring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on all the pieces I want to highlight over. Uh, not the whole thing, just in here. There it goes. OK, 
Okay, that's the fiddly bit. I could probably leave these off and be fine, but we're gonna do them all just to make sure. Again, more of a little fiddly bit. Probably not terribly important, but. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is select here. <sighs> Click okay, and you can see I now have another piece of my truss or my bridge completed, another set of trusses. And then I can just go in and I can keep replicating and doing this. Let's experiment and see if I can do it without the other pieces. What do you know, it works just fine. Okay, and I can keep doing this all the way to the end. So I'm gonna do that. And again, this is why we use stuff like CAD tools so that we can move quickly. This would be several days worth of work if we were doing it by hand, probably. Now I have one last piece. I'm gonna come in here, select mirror. And I just need this one piece. That should be done. Let me look and make sure it meets up the line. Sure does. So what I can do now, so I can finish this sketch. This was all one sketch. I can do my extrude. I can select the profiles I want. So I'm gonna have to select each of these trusses. Yes, it's mildly annoying, but it's something that's not terribly bad. It's just literally clicking inside of them. Okay, those are there, and I want to extrude them an eighth of an inch. Again, I don't want to do the math. I'm gonna let Fusion do the math for me. So I've done that, and now I have one half of my truss bridge done effectively, okay? So we'll wrap this one up here, and then I'll, I'll show you how to do the rest of the bridge in other videos.